We thank God for another wonderful Father's Day. And I just want to thank God for our father in the house, our daddy in the house. Thank God for all the men. Thank God for all the grandpas, uncles, the men, the fathers-to-be, the fathers in the making. We appreciate you for all you do. And I thank God for our mother in the house. We cannot do anything without our mothers. Amen. Thank you, Mommy, for this opportunity, for this privilege to stand here before you. And Daddy, I do not take you for granted. I thank God also for my king, the crown of my head. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, amen. I have, well, I have just 14 more minutes. And I want to briefly just encourage our men. I want to say that all the men in House of the Rock are wonderful men. They are wonderful men. And it is the grace of God because we see how wonderful they are because of our father in the house. Can we just say thank you, Daddy? We appreciate him. He sets exemplary leadings for all our men to follow. And that is why when you come to House on the Rock, one of the things that will strike you is that this is a family church. This is a church that is grounded as a family, that encourages, fosters, loves to make sure that family thrives. And this is something that is so difficult to find nowadays especially in this modern world. But our Father makes, puts a lot of emphasis on that. So today, I just want to encourage our men, because they're doing wonderfully well. They, they, you see them with their wives. They, they, we see you with your children. We see how you have encouragement for us, all men in the house. And how do you know the evidence that you are a godly man. What evidence do you have? We are not all perfect. We are all in one way or the other as men, as fathers. This is it's such a honor to be speaking to all our fathers this morning. But I just want to encourage your sirs, daddies, uncles. What are those evidence in our lives that shows that we are godly men? Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1, reading from 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper that is what is evident in a godly man a godly man walks daily in pursuit of god every day there is a season there is constant communication with the godly man with his maker because the role of men, especially, I, I keep going back to the word modern, is, is actually a bigger challenge. There are so many battles, there are so many aspirations, there are so many dreams that are yet to be fulfilled. So many pressures for men. And when I was really pondering on what the Lord wanted to lay on my heart to really share and bless the men with, is I just realized all the roles that men play in our lives. As fathers, as husbands, the expectations are set high. But what does it take to stand in the midst of all these challenges? And the book of Psalms tells us, does not work in, 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 in the wickedness of this world. Stays persistent in a pursuit of God. Not in perfection, but with a heart that constantly thirsts and seeks for God as David did. David was not a perfect man. There is nothing called a perfect man. We are all imperfect. The only perfect man is Jesus. So any man that has reached his goal wants to tell me he's Jesus? No. So it is a constant pursuit and thirsting for the things of God. And it takes a lot of work on our part, diligence, Consistency in prayer. 
leading prayer is not a spiritual competition. It is just your communication with God. Fathers, we are busy. There are so many things that goes on in our lives. We are trying to juggle, you know, the work front, the home front. And it is a lot of pressure. Because men are, are, are providers. Men have to ultimately provide. Making sure that the wives are okay, the children are okay, the family is okay, the church of God is okay. And then the workplace is okay. Wow, that's a lot. And this plays men in, actually in the forefront in all these roles as leaders. So leaders, multifaceted leaders, leading a group every single time. In church, at home, at work, and at an organization. So how do we do this without consistent prayer? There has to be consistent prayer. There has to be consistent memorization of scriptures in our hearts. There has to be willingness to worship God in spirit and in truth. I love that debate. Our sister said women love to worship God. I wonder if all the, ch the church would be filled one day and women were not here and we worship God. But you know what? We have worshippers in this house that are men. Because on, on Mother's Day, it was glorious. Can all the women say amen? amen. True worshippers. And I believe that that day God was just so happy and so pleased. A godly man is willing to walk with, with godly convictions. Daily being convicted of this race that we run. Making sure that this truth is being hidden in your hearts. Making sure that we, we walk in this counsel that is set forth in Psalms 1 verses 1 to 3. A godly man is like a tree who is planted rooted, is immovable, brings forth fruit in, fruit in its season. There, there are peaks and there are valleys. And there is always a season that a man will go through. And the consistency is our work with God. Today, we know how Shadrach, and Mish Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were convicted. They knew that God would deliver them. They knew that. I wonder what would happen if the nation of America will have more men that will rise and stand for what is right, for their true conviction that we would take this nation back, we would take our homes back and say women sit in the back burner because you are just my helper. And the men are running in the front. Wow, what an awesome God. And you know what? I am so excited because that is what I see happening in House on the Rock. Praise the Lord. I see men running running around and yearning to serve the Lord. Their heart is so, it's just so open, willingly and, and just ready. And that is because of the leadership we have in the house. If we had a leadership that was cool, full of compromise, it would be revealed in, this, in, the, in the standards that is set in this church. This church has set a very high standard for our children coming forward, for the homes, because daddies, you are the little gods in your house. You are the kings. I have my king in my house. All women, we have our kings. You are the kings in your house. Rule and reign with God. Without God, nothing is impossible. But there is a, a battle that every man faces. Quickly, please, technical first kings. Chapter 20, verses 39 to 40. 1 Kings chapter 20 verses 39 to 40. Praise the Lord. Now as the king passed by, he cried out to the king and said, Your servant went out into the midst of the battle. And there a man came over and brought a man to me and said, Guard this man, if by any means he is missing. Your life shall be for his life or else you shall pay a talent of silver. While your servant was busy here and there, he was gone. Then the king of Israel said to him, So shall your judgment be. You yourself have decided this. This is the primary responsibility for every man here. That before you function in all the offices that God has placed you in, that you have to have a settlement in your heart. That you fulfill that primary responsibility. This was a king here. And this, the, the nameless prophet. And in now, 
when we compare the story to ourselves now, it is a very easy application. He wasn't idle watching God. He was busy. We can be busy. Yes, we are distracted. But we have to guard ourselves. Because when you look at kings, they're guarded. When you look at presidents, they're guarded. So, briefly in this person, he's saying we have to guard ourselves with the thorn of ages to make sure that all this danger that you're facing, all these temptations that arise, that you are guarding yourselves, guarding your hearts, which is so important, so that you can fulfill all the capacities that God has called you on. This modern life makes it so easy sometimes to have a television God. This modern life makes it so easy that we can listen to worship but not worship God. And what he really wants from us is he wants, he has raised us as worshippers. And this life can be so busy that we can all say to it that sometimes it is a busy life, men, that we are running from back and forth but there is no time that we are spending to listen to God. And he's saying, I want you to guard what I have given you. That is your primary responsibility for every man and woman. To guard your soul. Form a hedge of protection. So that when all these distractions have been faced, you have been faced by it. There is something in there. There is worship. There is the word of God. There is consistency. And you know what? There is mentorship. There is no man that is perfect. So every man, I love our daddy. He tells us so many. He's, he's very open and honest. He tells us where things are and what. I mean, very easy to tell us where he's gone wrong. But look for mentors amongst you. Look for people to carry you when, when you're in the valley. Because we'll go through the valley. But sometimes you cannot go through it alone. Look for the men of God that we have in the house. Because you have to guard yourself. Every man to himself on that day of judgment. Every man to himself. Because I know that God is calling all men to a higher level. You know, and a higher level of calling means a higher level of authority. Spiritual, financial. Can we just imagine when men take their absolute role and take it to the next level? How God is just reeling and ready to just bring down the blessing on the families and make the impossible possible. So our primary roles, men, and this also regards women, is guarding that man. The man, the king is Jesus. The man is all these men that were sitting here and guarding, making sure that we guard that which is very much priority to us because when you guard it, you have influence on your wife. Your children are happy because you are daily meditating on the word of God. You know how to love your wives. And I thank God for all our men here. This is to encourage you. You are doing well. You can do better. It is just to continuously striving for perfection because there is no perfect man. But how do we strive without God? Need is what is need. It is what we need, what is required to perform a specific function. So we need God. We need the Holy Spirit. Men, you, you are doing too much. And you cannot do it on the physical. You need the Holy Spirit. Even our dad in the Lord constantly tells us how he has his time. That he's constantly asking. Even our daddy, Daddy Gio, tells us about it. So there is a constant need to replenish ourselves so that when we come out, our wife will say, wow, look at my husband. You are radiating the glory of God. You know, you, you even look more attractive to your children because the glory of, you know, you, you carry so much authority. Before you say, hey, your wife is, has, done, has already gone to Z. It's the truth. We are doing it, but we can do better. We are doing it, but we can do better. Praise the Lord. And it is not about being lazy. No, we have wonderful men. It is just about working hard. 
If the edge is off, how can we trust ourselves? How do we know that we are capable? Women, how do we know? How do we know that we can function? So our one, number one rep- responsibility in showing, portraying this character, this port- portrait of a godly man is guarding this man. So this man can move to the next level because God is ready to visit each and every man here to go to that next level. Say a big amen. amen. When there is weakness, we lift each other up. All men, all women face the same battle. With character, with integrity, with purity. It's all over in the modern world. What are we doing? Army of mighty men. Standing strong together. And there will be revival. And there shall be revival. So we put on a thorny edge around our lives. And it forms automatically around our children. Around our wives. Around our businesses. So that we can focus on the major. And Holy Spirit will take control. Wake up mighty men. And keep this man spiritually. Your word have you all eaten in your hands. So that we will not sin against him. And you will find each and every man in this house. Worthy on that last day in the name of Jesus. And worthy to go to that next level. Where God begins to raise men and men that will propagate the kingdom. The kingdom of God needs mighty men. Men that God will bless and just entrust with billions of dollars. Not just for yourself but for the work of God. Praise the Lord. This morning, as I round up, I want us to search our hearts. And acknowledge that we are weak, but yet he's strong. That we need him more than ever before. That in him, we live, we move, and we find our being. May we all rise. And I want each and every man and woman, children, So just ask God this morning. Lord, I need you. I need you. I cannot do this work by myself. You have a higher calling. A higher responsibility for me. I have to guard my life. So I do not fail. As a father. As a husband. As a leader in my my vocation. As a minister. As a worker in the house of God. I need you. I don't want to be an empty vessel. Lord Jesus, I need you. That is my prayer this morning because once I have you, I have everything. Seek you first, the kingdom of God. And every other thing will be handed unto you. And I know, because I know I had a strong conviction this morning that God wants to raise men that will propagate the kingdom of God with the wealth that the world has not seen. Because the world is dying out there. We have church, we take church outside. We have church in-house, but every single day, men, you take church to your work. You take church to your home. You are the priest in your house. You are the priest in your home. You lay your hands on your wife and you, you, you pray upon that situation and you agree and it happens. There is so much work. I had a burden for men this, when I was preparing this. A burden because I see that where the next level is, it cannot just take our father and mother and the Lord alone. It takes mighty men of God to the glory of his name to find that church that is not just filled here but goes beyond this world to make great and mighty men. Lord, I want us all to say with me, Lord Jesus, I give you my life today. I surrender completely. Every weakness, every battle of the mind. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. And for the blood that cleanses me. Now I am righteous 
in you. The Holy Spirit is invited afresh to fill us anew, to do His work daily, every hour, every minute, every second. And it will keep us behind the thorny edge in the name of Jesus. I am forgiven of all my sins. Come yours, I am forgiven of all my sins. I am forgiven of all of all my sins. And today I'm starting a new walk with you. And today I'm going to that next level. Praise the Lord. If today you just want to rededicate your life, I know he's here. Or you just say, Lord, I am ready. Because he's looking for men. And you know, these are the men he wants to entrust with the wealth. That is ready to propagate this job, this kingdom work to the next level. Just raise your hands to him. Or just say to your heart and just say, Lord, I receive you afresh. I have no power of my own. Just tell him your weakness and he's there to, to just replace that with his strength. Praise the Lord. Father, we bless you. We return all the glory unto you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the work you're doing at this hour, at this, at this time. This is a work calling the army in this house to stand up for you so that you can do the work. You can release that great and mighty blessings you have in store for them. Lord, we thank you because you have done it. We thank you because this word has found great and wonderful and mighty uh, um, ground to be sown in. We love you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.